So one of the first things I needed to do was figure out which containers I wanted for my soy candles. I went with these four ounce metal ones because they were, well, cute. And they were really simple to use. I also needed to get wicks that would match the size of the container. So you don't want wicks too big or too small. The way I stuck the wicks to the tins was with hot glue gun. Uh, you have to be careful though because the glue needs to be able to withstand high temperatures because, well, it's a candle. You can also use stickers that are specifically designed for the wicks, but I didn't have any of those, so hot glue gun it is. And when placing wicks, make sure you center it. Now that all my wicks are glued, I use a clothespin to keep them centered when pouring the wax. Aw, look at my candle babies. Now it's time for the fun part, preparing the wax. I'm going to be using Bramble Berries Golden Soy Wax 444 for the candles. I measure out how many ounces I need for the containers I have. I'm going to use Bramble Berry's Apple Sage as the candle fragrance. I'm going to go to their site, see how much I should use with how many ounces of candle wax I'm using, and also tell me flash points, if it discolors, if it's safe for candles. This is just stuff that you really need to find out before you use a fragrance. Now that I had my fragrance oiled measured out, it was time for the colorants. I'm using Mica and Bramble Berry candle flakes. And now the water is boiling because I'm going to use a double boiler for the wax. So I measure out the wax, place it in there, and then I just wait. And wait. And wait. Not sure if you guys picked up on it, there's there's a little bit of waiting for this part. I've also been told that you have to wait until it's 185 to put the fragrance oil for the best results. So that's what I did. Here I am pouring it. Yay me. I added the color flakes, mixed it all up, trying to be slow so it didn't create bubbles. And then I added mica for a little bit of shimmer. You don't need a lot. I might have added a little too much for this but ooh, look at that look at that oh it's so good it looks so pretty finally it was time to pour and hopefully you will do a much better job than I did uh, I realize holding the camera and pouring um, it's it's not a thing I do well so yeah sorry but that's the best I could do and now that it, they were all poured I just wait Yep, more waiting. So that's what we're gonna do. Yep, more waiting, more waiting. Yep, and it's go time. Now it's finally time to take the clips off and trim the wicks. I later realized I had to cut the wicks a little bit lower, but not by too much. And also, you'll notice that it's a little bumpy on the surface, but that's actually normal. It, it happens. This one's really bumpy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the hot, hot, what is that thing called? The, the gun thing. Uh, is it a, no, it's not. What is that? Crap. Heat gun, it's a heat gun. I used a heat gun and that made it smoother. Still a little bumpy sometimes, but better. And now that you let your candle cure for a week or two and let the scent really incorporate with the wax, you have a candle. Look, look, oh, do you see the shimmers? Do you see the shimmers in there? Yeah, yeah, you did that. You did that. Good job. Ooh, it's so pretty. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.